there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. We were all diagnosed at once. I went immediately into denial. It changed my life very quickly. The average age of people dying was 35. I think it's wonderful that he's turning 30 and that we'll celebrate, but I'm also aware that it means we're the conditions progressing. Fredris had taxia. It's a progressive neuromuscular condition. It starts by affecting nerves and coordination. Get the shoes. Get the shoes. Yes. Get the shoes. Yes. It can affect speech and other systems like the heart. Fredris ataxia is genetically inherited from birth, although you typically won't know that. It isn't an illness in the sense that there's something you can see in a microscope. That's it, and we get rid of this thing and you'll find you're over here and that thing's there. Fredrick says, it is me, down to the molecular level, it's me. So I can no more hate it than hate myself. Two out of my four siblings also have it. Of us with the condition, James is the eldest, and that's, that's very key to his personality. He leads the rest of us, and Therese is the youngest. Therese is very, very determined. She makes her world her own, and she doesn't seem quite so bothered about what other people think. And they live together short way away. I uh, got diagnosed at uh, 23, um, but symptoms sort of started to become more apparent when I was 18. I was about 10 when we started noticing symptoms and started noticing things that were other than the norm. Just stumbling and a lot more clumsy. If I didn't have any brothers, you would just think I was a clumsy child, but because I had two older brothers that had that similar thing, and then two sisters that didn't, we could notice that there was something there. Mum wanted me to go and see a neurologist, which I didn't want to, until when I was 21 and I started training to be a builder, and then I realised that I couldn't do a bunch of things like bouncing on top of the building and stuff. So we went off to the neurologist? Yeah. And on the same day, they were all True. diagnosed. Friedrich's ataxia is a rare genetic condition. So you don't know you're a carrier, you're not tested, and we just had children like we didn't know, and because they weren't diagnosed into their teens, we didn't realise, yeah. If we had four children, the chances of getting someone with three jets is one in four. So getting three out of five was pretty tough. It was pretty tough, yeah. Yeah, it's a randomness of genetics, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I'm an, an anaesthetist, mm -hmm. uh, basic medical training in Dunedin. I'm a palliative care nurse, so I've worked in uh, the local Arahanui Hospice for the last 20 years. 
So people must have thought, you guys must know, because we've got some medical knowledge, but actually we didn't know. Then we got diagnosed and we were all diagnosed at once. I know, kind of surreal. We weren't told it a lot at the time. I knew I was in a wheelchair by 30 and I knew life expectancy was probably going to be in my 30s somewhere. I went out and bought a cane because I'm quite a theatrical person. Yes, you and I knew I was staggering around, but I now wanted to make it work for me. And I also wanted to have a way of signaling to other people that I'm not drunk. I have a cane, which means it's a different kind of problem. <laughs> it was an incredibly fun family to grow up in. We always used to have dancing in the lounge after dinner. Here's Luke Skywalker. Ah, oh, sorry, here's Joseph. Hello. We had so many childhood memories that kind of stopped for a while because we yeah. didn't have those good times oh, for quite a that, while. Absolutely, that stopped. Mm. Yeah. It was really hard to. Mm. And you stay in, we stayed in our um, Boon Team bubble where you don't really. You didn't, we didn't really open up to many other no. people because you don't want to burden other people with mm. your. You know, your um, grief. I love having our whole family together, all our kids home. It's just wonderful. And my love language is feeding them all. It's always a bit chaotic. So, Joe, last day of 29, eh? We're going to celebrate tomorrow. What do you reckon, Joe? Getting old? Yeah, it's quite a refined decade. That is great. <laughs> 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 Frederick's a taxi that has brought our family closer together. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it affects every one of us. I think anything that's tough, actually in life, you learn more from, don't you? And we've had to be vulnerable with each other and we've just wanted to support each other and we just have so much love. <laughs> I'm here with Lydia and James, and you have to move across our races. Choose an artist from your team who can get you to guess the answer on the back of this card by drawing clues on paper with no people. I think the support for my family has been very important in the sense that it's not just Racy, James, and I that have this thing, we kind of all have it. In a sense, it's a, it's a thing that has happened to our family. Say our lord to my little friend. Like the godfather? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Al Pacino. No. Yeah. Yeah. How's this thing working for you? How's the hearing thing working for you? I'm the only one to have got a hearing support system. The signals that the ear is sending to the brain all get scrambled up. I'm on the wrong wavelength, I've lost it. Yeah, I've been thinking about getting something like that myself now that my hearing is also really affected. Oh, it's your stubbing technique? Yes. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not great. There's a difference between not hearing and not listening. Yes. Quite often we're not hearing, but we're trying damn hard to listen. The physical health part has a very basic method of finding a solution. You're having trouble walking, have a cane. There are ways of managing. What's visible is much more easy to address. There is no such thing like that for mental health. 
I've experienced a series of depressions um, and and really that, that tied pretty closely with the anxiety. There's no possibility for me to live without getting depressed. Depression is, is simply a, a, a side effect of having to adapt and things not working and the ambition getting frustrated. And so it just takes time and it always takes time, but eventually figuring out a new way forward to reach that goal again in a slightly different way, that's what then brings my confidence back. Because then, then I'm like, okay, yes, no, I am still the person who wants to do that. I think having a, a goal to work Woods is important for depression. At the end of, of last year, I jumped on the opportunity to stand as a candidate for the Green Party. Disabled people, can't, they don't just talk about disabled things. And unfortunately, with coronavirus going around, I've had to let that go. FA has affected my passion for politics by making it very personal. When um, looking at disability policy and arguing about it with people, I have more than just skin in the game. That's uh, a good thing and a bad thing. Well, I admire uh, Joe for his, um, his character. So I feel I'm a little more on the realistic kind of side of things, whereas Joe is a bit more bigger things. For me, Frederick's the text here isn't as progressed as my siblings. Um, I also haven't need spinal fusion, whereas they both have. So I can lead the way with workouts and stuff. And uh, we're not sitting down, so just go down. That's it. I like that. Yep, that's it. Eight, a little, little more on the way down. That's it. Three. Nice. Uh, how do you feel about turning 30? Pretty good, Bradley. I like good. Yeah. My twenties were a mixed bag, I think. Yep, thirties is weird, but not too weird. Yeah. A midlife crisis, do you reckon? Well, no, I think I've kind of been a long crisis ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Diagnosis, so. I think Joe struggles the most with getting frustrated at things. Always been kind of uh, the optimist and the cheerleader, I guess, in a way, just to push people to to another level, not only in the workouts, but also in life. Three. Cool, thank put you. Bit, put a little bit of cold water in it. Cool. How was last night? Oh, it was good, yep. Great. Which New Zealand Prime Minister died suddenly at sea while returning home from Australia? Richard Seddon. That's a good uh, starter for 10. What As a dad and having two sons, that, that was a major grief for me, I think, and that there's a lot of physical stuff that I think we would have really enjoyed as boys in, in, with a dad, but that has not been possible because they're, they're not able to physically do what, you know, we could have done. Blokes want to be strong and they want to be physically uh, able to do a lot of stuff. My mum and my sisters are very close. We often do stuff all together. There's a baby in the tummy. You can't see it, can you? Oh, no, and who's you don't this? Know, eh? And they do try and support me the best that they can. <laughs> I'm the only girl in my family that has Friedrich's attacks here. It's just different being a girl and having different issues. I can talk about it with my sisters, but not in a way that relates to, 
disability so much that they could understand it. So it is quite isolating in a way. I feel sometimes that I'm not good enough, um, especially because my both of my brothers have had relationships in the past, whereas I haven't. And so I, is that just about me? Is that disability related? I don't think so. I think it's just me. <laughs> I definitely compare myself to my sisters all the time, and I know it's a negative thing because I'm never, ever going to be anywhere near them. But I do it anyway. I feel like not one of the girls. I'm not one of the girls because I don't have that kind of relationship with them. I don't know, but I'm not quite one of the boys, so I'm in a weird nowhere place. I'm sure it must be hard that yeah, Maisie yeah. sees her sisters get married, have babies mm. and things. Mm. Yeah, but we're really um, um, not even careful to, it's not a careful thing, like embrace mm. being an auntie. We're really and, good at embracing and, that side. And of sharing it. the experiences, obviously yeah. not being married, but yeah. you know. Raisie's someone I feel just so protective of <laughs> to the core, you know. Um I wish I could take a lot of I don't know, if there's pain, but a lot of mm. the pain away. Mm. Yeah. I met my girlfriend Anne at the Matthew Gym. She was over on her undergrad degree. I talked to her at the gym, and then I turned up the next day. And I saw her, then I asked her out straight away. And did bring up Frederick to taxi here for like three weeks. Then I brought it up and I asked her about it. And uh, she was worried by it. She said, um, it doesn't matter because it's not your fault. And I thought that was amazing, and that made me pour for her even more. <laughs> hey. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Have you looked into housing at all yet? Uh, no, at the moment, the property Just market is going down a little bit in some places, but then not in other places. So, yeah, it just totally depends where we end up. Soon after um, she went back to America, she finished off her undergrad degree and she started a vet degree. So uh, in 2016, uh, that was my first trip to America with Anne. And now I choose a vet, which is something that is awesome. So the goals that I have for myself currently would be to um, give my girlfriend into New Zealand and then start a life with her wherever we end up. Well, you have a great night and a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Sounds great. I love you all. Love you Hello. How are you feeling this morning? I'm pretty good. Is that almost there? Cool, well, we are done there. One, two, three. Therese is very similar to me in the way we operate. Um, she's a very determined person, so during the workouts, you can really see that coming through, which she'll bear through things a bit more. Nine. One hundred. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Excellent. Raisie struggles a little more with direction. Um, that might stem from being diagnosed at 15. It's, it's a bit of an age when you're not quite sure of where you're going. Getting diagnosed at 15 is quite hard. Didn't quite understand what it was at first, and then pretty quickly I got incredibly depressed. 
<laughs> really good. Look good. Going back to school, having this knowledge that you have a lifelong issue <laughs> is quite hard. I did find it hard to focus on school work. What's the point? Why? Why should I do this if I don't get anything out of it at the end of this? I was quite quiet and quite um, very unpopular. So then having that added on made me even more so. Because I couldn't go many places, people would stop inviting me. And so then friendships just fell away. It made me feel quite alone. And then that doesn't help with depression. So yeah, I got quite down. I got quite into it post-diagnosis. It was to give me something I could actually, I could get good at and progress at when everything else seemed to be going the other way. I'm, I'm obviously quite clumsy with my hands. I often call them foot hands. I find it does improve my mood. Uh, I think probably uh, other people would notice that more than I would, generally. <laughs> I'm a lot less irritable and grumpy. Sweet. Another thing with Friedrichs is we don't really have good spatial awareness. So if I'm not looking at my hands or my feet, I don't really know where they are. And so um, when I was driving, I would be scared to do the accelerator or the brake because I wouldn't know which pedal my foot was touching. So I stopped driving for about two years. And then we got hand controls put in my car. And that has been a huge change. I am an office administrator. A lot of people think that I am not there mentally. I think fine. All my mental capacity to do anything. I'm just physically not quite to scratch. My writing is not good. And sometimes on my work, I think that makes me look like I'm not very intelligent. There is a bit of an issue around discrimination with disability in every part of New Zealand, not just in the workplace, but everywhere. It's just how people treat you. I do feel like Sometimes they undermine me. I've been at my job for five and a half years. But I'm on minimum wage. It hasn't changed for a while, so it's interesting. It's very important to me to be seen academically. I like to push myself and learn new things, but not having that recognition that you do try quite hard is very difficult sometimes. There are always silver linings. There is always something good. Even in the worst thing, there is something good. I've used writing as a coping mechanism 
especially poetry, because you can be very angry and write great poetry, or very happy and write great poetry. I'm writing a poem for my brother today about his birthday and turning 30. <laughs> it's a Therese poem, so it's both a comedy and heartfelt. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say it at my brother's 30th party and I hope he enjoys it and feels the love that I've put on to Especially comes walking. Did you put them on, darling? You can put one on. I think it's wonderful that he's turning 30 and that he's um that we'll celebrate, but I'm also aware that it means we're the conditions progressing and we're saying goodbye to those years that when you're, when you're young, you know, that's kind of a big thing too. Mm. Think back to when the diagnosis was made and how they, where they could have been, mm. you know, at the age of 30, and we celebrate that they're not. We're very proud, actually, of our kids, aren't we? Yeah. Of our family, mm. very proud. Yeah. Each one of them. Each one of them, yes. Yeah. I feel quite excited about entering my 30s I know where I'm going and what I want to do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joseph. Happy birthday to you. I think the importance I place on family, um, for me, it's everything. I actually couldn't imagine what I'd be like without having family. I can't actually really imagine what life would be like. Uh, right, well, um, you know, it couldn't be chosen or designed to, you know, spend 30 years with such an excellent family. Looking forward to however many years ahead, 30, 40. Yeah, I couldn't, I really couldn't imagine life without, without all of you. So. Now, as 30 is a special milestone, you enter into a new zone to Rome. See just how much I dearly love you, Joe. I wish you the happiest of birthdays I know. Happy birthday, Joe. We need to camp that with an atexic hug. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Oh, very special.